Hello, this is Cobkit, and I am on Glacio playing Astroneer, and I wanted to show you my RTG factory. Okay. So, for those of you who are new to the game, what is an RTG? An RTG is a power source that you do not need to provide fuel for. See here, it'll just keep pumping out power at a steady rate all the time. You know, four units of power per second. Um, but you never have to provide any fuel for it. It's really is a game changer. It is a pain to make. Um, 12,500 bytes, I believe, with a ton of raw resources required. So let's see, you need two ammonium, you need graphite, you need hydrogen, um, you need organic, hematite, argon, you need titanite, you need nitrogen, you need helium, you can only get on Atrox and you need lithium. That is all the raw materials that you need to make one RTG. Ah, wish that I could stop opening and closing. Oh well, I guess that's my fault for building so close to it. Okay, so what I have here is a very over-engineered setup for making RTGs. I can make a ton of RTGs basically all the time just by feeding these ingredients into it. Um, built here on Glacio because most of the materials that you need, most of the raw materials are very easy to get here. Um, ammonium and graphite, pretty common on the surface. Uh, titanite, uh, easy to find in caves. Actually, it's pretty easy to find on the surface too. Just check on some of the valleys, you can usually find deposits of it. Um, obviously, hematite is everywhere. Um, all over the surface. Organic is easy to get just about anywhere. Um, you can't get any of the gases on Glacio except for argon. Um, so you are going to need to have gas outposts. Um, helium, again, you can only get that on Atrox. Uh, you'll need nitrogen and hydrogen. You can get both of those on Vesania, which conveniently is also the best place to get lithium. So I have a gas outpost on Vesania to get my nitrogen, to get my hydrogen, and then I also have a outpost on the trucks to pick up my helium. Okay, so what is this thing set up to do? Um, let me show you here. I've got my crow's nest, just hop up there. Show you that this is designed um, to work with three different modules. So on the left, this module is designed to make graphene. Okay, so to make graphene, you're going to need your ammonia, uh, you're going to need hydrogen, you're going to need graphite. Um, on the right here, this is the steel module. This is set up to make steel. And in the center, what we have is titanium and lithium. Um, and this is set up to make titanium alloy, as well as nanocarbon alloy, combining with the graphene, as well as the steel. Um, and then to automatically print that onto a large storage. Let me show you in a little bit more detail. Okay, so we have our steel module over here. I apologize for all the large storages. It does make it a little dense here and hard to see. Let me just take this off just a bit. Not in the way. There we go. We'll put them back on in a second. I may cut this. Um, oh, goodness. Yeah, you know what? Hold on a second. Let me get some of these storages out of the way. And then I will cut back in so that this is not oh, my camera clipping all over the place. So, be back in just a second. Okay, now, that's a little bit better. Um, so this is our steel module right here. You can see I'm using the extra large platform C's um, as the basis of all of these modules. And the reason for that is that the materials will automatically pull off of the soil centrifuge, off of the smelter, supply to the chem table, jump to storage. <clears throat> Everything that's on one platform gives you a better degree of automation. Um, so what do you need to make? Steel, iron, and carbon. So the idea here is you spin your organic out of the soil centrifuge that hops over onto the storages here. You load this up with hematite, start the smelter, it all cooks up. Um, I have my argon collection over here with my gas storage silo. Just throw a couple of those onto one of these storages 
and then you walk over to the chem table and you are ready to make basically as much steel as you need um, since most of the end game uh, storage options, platforms, whatnot, do require iron and steel. Um, this is definitely something that I would suggest setting up as soon as you're able to. So on the left, on the other hand, we have our graphene module. Uh, so this is similar. I actually have two chemistry labs. One specifically for graphene. The other one is set up for, up. Uh, sorry, excuse me. One set up for hydrazine and another one set up for graphene. Um, same basic principle. Uh, you have uh, two large chemistry labs here. We're actually using the trade platform. Um, trading, scrap is a really easy way to get lots of graphene. It's a one to one. It's a pretty good source of ammonia, too. Uh, oh, graphene is two to one. Uh, ammonia is one to one. Um, and Glacio is actually really good for scrap. You can see this is my garbage truck set up here. I've got my extra large scrapper on a double rover. Just load this up with medium platforms. Glacio is very easy to run around on. And now you can scrap the tops of the research aids. So, and I think those produce two stacks of scrap a piece. Um, let's see, gas storage silo over here with the hydrogen. Um, let's see, that is the graphene module. And then on the center here, this is our module for actually printing up the RTGs. So what you do is you combine steel, the graphene, one titanium, you make titanium alloy, then you make nanocarbon alloy uh, using nitrogen and then helium. And then that is going to come over here. Again, it's all feeding onto one central storage. Um, so everything can pull from everything. You've got these two small printers that are set up to print at set correctly they look like RTGs and you can see that those will try to print them right onto available storage spots now I moved my gas storage silos off to the side here uh, but when those are occupied it will print right onto this large storage I also have this little back area set up soil centrifuge to spin out some clay I can make into graph, uh, make into ceramic, and print out new large storages. And that's not really necessary, but it's kind of fun to once you've got this made and four RTGs, you just pull this off and then you reset and you're ready to go again. Okay, um, that is those are the three modules. Let me get all of the storages put back where they're supposed to be, and I will cut back and show you it doing its thing. Okay, let me see. But we should be good to go. So, let's get this all cooking. Make some steel. Yeah. Oh, I do make sure that I've got my backpack socks on. Third steel. And four. I'm set up to do about four. Oh, <laughs> I also have my shuttle set up over there so I can pull any partial pieces of canisters off the shuttle. Load it up over here. Also, this is where I can put hydrazine, so it makes sense to me. It looks like I like myself just enough hydrazine to make four. Just for the heck of it. Get some Okay, so now, let's see, it should be set to titanium alloy. That could be.
And then I'm not gonna grab it actually, I'm just gonna tell it to make it again. That's gonna load off to storage. So once we get two coats, we'll go over and get those RTG sprinting. Okay, switch over to nanocarbon. Third one started, we'll run over and start those two printers. <laughs> and you can see they're ready to go. Okay, this one's ready to come out. Start it. Um, this last one, we're gonna grab and stick on our backpack. Okay. Okay, so what do we have there? 16 power ready to use. Uh, good for if you're in a research farm or, you know, whatever. I mean, once you've got access to RTGs, you pretty much just start sticking them everywhere. Um, let's see. We can set this up. Print off another large storage just so that I can reset and be ready to go again. Um, so, like I said, totally fun, totally over-engineered, completely unnecessary, but, you know, no problem with that. Uh, so, thanks so much. Um, yep, I guess that's it. Cockett signing off. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>